Hey guys, this video is brought to you by AerospacePal.com. We deliver free content tailored specifically to the aerospace community. Come check out the site. In this video, we'll go over section 21 of D160, Emissions of Radio Frequency Energy. Now this is going to be the second part, Radiated Emissions, or RE. In this section, we're going to monitor radio frequency emissions from your interconnecting cables and your EUT itself. This test is pretty short. It's ranging from 100 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. Previous sections of D160 tested all the way down to 2 megahertz. This proved to be inconsistent from test facility to test facility using the active rod antenna method. So conducted emissions was increased to 152 megahertz and radiated emissions starts now at 100 megahertz. This provides a slight and needed overlap. The purpose of radiated emissions is to ensure that you're not interfering with other RF sensors on the aircraft. Now for section 21, the category is one letter for both conducted emissions and radiated emissions. Going from least stringent to most stringent, the categories are B, products that are not near RF antennas or other sensitive equipment. L, equipment that is far from apertures of the aircraft like windows and far from RF antennas, for example the electronics bay. M, this is for equipment that may be near apertures of the aircraft, but not in direct view of RF antennas, for example, the cabin or cockpit. H, has a direct view of the RF antennas, usually on the outside of the aircraft. Q, equipment and associated wiring that may be near VHF or GPS radio receiver antennas, or has little aircraft structure shielding. And finally, P, equipment and associated wiring near HF, VHF, or GPS radio receiver antennas. Now for this test, your equipment needs to be calibrated, but if you're using the traditional method, there's no specific calibration of the test setup. Now looking at the test setup, it's your typical test setup specified in D160 with your wiring harness about 5 centimeters off the conducted bench. As mentioned previously, this is usually achieved with some insulating foam. Now a couple things to note, your antenna distance should be exactly 0.9 meters from the edge of the bench and you should have at least 1 meter of your EU2 bundle 10 centimeters from the edge of the bench. Additional cable beyond that can be zigzagged towards the back of the bench. Bulkhead filtering should adequately filter out the noise from power sources and simulated interfaces to prevent your interface emissions from causing a failure of the test. 10 microfarad caps should be used and they should be the feed through style and not the leaded style. Make sure to close the chamber door otherwise your favorite pop radio station might wreck your day. If you have two bundles coming out of your EUT in the same direction, make sure to route one 10 centimeters from the edge of the bench and the other one 5 centimeters from that or 15 centimeters from the edge of the bench. I do want to state that section 21 for radiated emissions also has an alternate method called the reverb method. Although I have not personally tested RE using the reverb method, the idea is the same as radiated susceptibility. A stirring pedal continuously rotates to ensure the EUT polarity and or cable routing does not affect the measurement. Now this test is typically done at a testing house because of the complexity of the test and the cost of the equipment. Once your test setup is complete and you're running your unit in your first operating mode, the test engineer will scan across the 100 MHz to 6 gig range, stopping at a couple points to change antennas. If you're using the traditional anechoic chamber method, you'll need to test each antenna in two different polarities, vertical and horizontal. This should take less than an hour per scan. D160 says you should consider operating modes that produce the highest emissions, but since the scan takes such a minimal amount of time, I would just suggest scanning in all modes so you can save yourself the trouble of justifying it. Once each scan is completed, Complete, review the data of your EUT emissions and ensure that you're below the limit and that you're passing. You've just completed one half of section 21 of D160 radiated emissions. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you found this informative, interesting, or just better than reading a 500 page standard, stop back at aerospacepal.com and tell other engineers about this free resource. Don't have a copy of D160? Check out the link below.